Wunderschönes Hallo, ich bin die D-Serie von Agenten.net und ich stehe hier auf der Marke Eventhalle und wir gehen jetzt ins Konzert von Wissen. It's almost like too young to quite remember the moment. I sang since I was a kid mm -hmm. and no one really told me how to sing. I just like sang as a, as a baby, you know, like I just like to sing and um, I started to write songs uh, even when I was little, like I just sing words and I would never remember them or write them down. I just sort of sing thoughts and words and stuff. And, and I would sing around my family, but I sort of did it for me. And then as I, you know, in my childhood, I did some theater, musical theater. Yeah. So like, I got really into that. Like I was Annie in the musical Annie and uh, did some other musicals. And um, so at that point was performing for people as a kid, you know, singing and took some classes, like dance classes and singing classes. Um, so really, like, to kind of re recap, when I was like a little tiny kid, I just always sang. So I followed that dream and always knew I wanted to be a singer. And so did theater when I was young. Then when I was like 14 or 15, I started to teach myself guitar. A teacher stuff. Yeah. It's very, yeah. It's yeah, just a couple chords at a time, though. You know, I for a couple years, it's like I only knew like five chords. You know, you go C, F, G, yeah. um, D, A minor. You know, there's E. There's these chords that like are the basic chords. I mean, even today, I still only really play very basic chords. So um, I started teaching myself how to play some chords. I started writing songs, and, and it just sort of went from there. So. Okay. And when was the point that you, that someone um, saw you and thought, oh, this is cool. This. So when gives you through that uh, from you little bird to a bigger verb, so. Yeah, well, um, so from high school I knew again that I wanted to, you know, be a performer and be a singer. And uh, so I was writing these songs and I went and did a couple years of college, yeah. um, which is like what you do after high school. I think you use like university. And um, when I went to college I was studying like everything. I didn't really pick a major. So I was playing lots of uh, gigs in, in bars and different music like concert venues. Um, just in my college town. Yeah. And um, I, I met up with this DJ, yeah. uh, DJ Harry, who was like signed. Yeah. And I did a song with him. Um, and at this point I was like 18. And it got like licensed. So this song I did with this DJ started getting put on TV shows and things like that. And that was a sign to me that like, okay, maybe I can do this for a living. Like I'm making money off of this song. Like how cool. And um, I quit school, you know, I quit college, and I moved to Los Angeles when I was 21. Oh, okay. and, I, uh, and I started just playing lots of gigs, and, you know, I met my manager and um, my booking agent, and I sort of had a lawyer, and you have this team of people, and then I went to London uh, when I was, like, 25, and I got um, signed to Columbia. Mm -hmm. So it sort of happened in, like, stages, you know, yeah. from, like, being young and musicals and starting to write songs as a teenager and having a little bit of success in college and then moving to LA to like make it um, and even once I moved to LA I mean it was a struggle I played concerts you know several times a week uh, you know every week for for years and and finally was able to get my record deal and um, and start working on my album and stuff so it's been little stages and I've had some successes like here and there um, but now it's sort of in the last two years the ball's really been rolling and yeah. now it's growing and growing. Yeah, now you can be very proud of your album. Yeah, I love my album and I'm ready to make a new one too, you know. I'm yeah. just, uh, I'm, I'm loving what I'm getting to do. I love my band, uh, I believe in my music and I, uh, and I have a good time performing so it's, it's a good thing. Yeah, and my question is how did you started to believe in you or said, oh yeah, every when you talk to, was talking to other people, then said, oh no, you're a little 
Maybe you're a little stupid girl, everyone wants to be a star. And how did you get the strength of will that you said, no, I'm at least I can do that. <laughs> yeah. I want to do that and I know what I want. Well, like you say, I mean, there are people who are like, oh, you know, that's a bit, not a very realistic goal. My parents always believed in me, so I was lucky that my parents, yeah. like, thought I was great. Mm -hmm. And my dad told me to, like, get an education because it was always good to, to be educated. But, like, you know, that he... You know, I think he worried more than my mom that, like, I was picking a hard career. But I think they also knew that I was so, like, kind of stubborn and persistent. Uh, and I was, like, you know, in high school people would tell me, like, you know, why are you doing that? Why are you acting that way? Like, why are you trying to, to think be you're a singer and, like, blah, 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 you know, whatever. And, um... And I was kind of a bit of a punk, and I'd just be like, you know, <laughs> not I don't want to cuss on your, yeah. but I would, I'd be like, don't tell me what to do, you don't know, that sort of thing. <laughs> so, and, and I just never stopped, like, no matter what someone said to me, or no matter how many times I, like, failed, I just kept trying, because yeah. I, I think, because I believed, and I had a good family, you know, who, who let me know that they were always going to be there for me, so, like, if I completely failed and was like out in the streets, I have a big family and it's not like I would be homeless. Yeah. So I just felt like I could go for it, you know? Yeah, so you didn't felt the love, so yeah. that's great, that's great. Yeah, no, I think oh, my parents definitely, I think having good parents, that's why it's like I think having children is an important decision because I think if you're not ready to like love someone and make them feel like they're so special, then you shouldn't be having children because it's like so important that parents encourage their children to to dream big and even if it's not like something like being a rock star it's just supporting someone and helping them find their passion yeah. I mean their passion could be you know growing vegetables or building furniture or whatever but I think it's like a lot of people don't know what they're passionate about because no one ever said hey you're really good at that you know yeah and I think that's uh, I was lucky that I had people in my life who were like yeah, and tell you you're good at that. Yeah, and you're special. We yeah, love you. You can do it. it. Yeah. So I got lucky in that way. It's cute. So and it, did you match that people that told you uh, you you can't do that? Yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> yeah, I mean even like I mean I had this choir teacher in high school mm -hmm. who like failed me out of her class. She was really mean to me. She would tell me that my voice sounded like, I mean, no offense, Britney Spears, I think you're awesome, but my, you know, she was like, you sound like Britney Spears when you sing, and I'd be like, no, I don't, like, whatever, it would, like, she meant it as an insult, not, again, I'm not saying that Britney Spears is terrible, but I'm just saying, like, she's as much a dancer and an entertainer as she is a sing you know, singing isn't really, I think, like, her ultimate goal in life, you know, whereas I always loved to sing, and I had this big voice, and I could control it, and had a, you know, a wide range, and like singing, I was really into it, and she just would sort of say these things to me all the time, like, trying to knock me down and make me feel like I better not get too into myself, you know, like, she was always putting me in check, yeah. and, uh, and I really didn't appreciate it, and I let her know I didn't appreciate it, and I ended up quitting choir anyway, and blah, 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 you know, that stuff happens to kids, it doesn't matter, I probably, some of that, you know, some of people telling you you can't almost makes you work harder. Like, I think some of my adversity of, you know, even in college, I dated this guy who was also a musician. And him and his friends would always sort of make me feel like my music was, like, stupid. Yeah. And, um, and, and because of that, it was like, I was like, well, I'll show you. <laughs> like, you know, kind of crazy. I'm like, I'll show you I can do it, you know. So sometimes I think when you have those people in your life, for example, like the choir teacher and this guy, you know, just two of many, and they are saying like, well, you're not that great. And you're thinking, you know, I am not walking around being like, I'm so great. Yeah. Like, I don't walk around and be like, I'm the best, you know. <laughs> I have... I'm humble all enough, you know, it's not like I think I'm the best, but I just, you know, in, in you just... You believe in you. Yeah, just being enthusiastic. Like, I'd be like, I want to do a show, and people would be like, that's stupid. And I'd just say, you know what, I will do that show, and it's going to be awesome, and then you're going to be eating your words. And so I used to really thrive, I think, off of um, a challenge. Yeah. So, and I was motivated to be like, you know, I'll show them. Yeah. But... And that's not super healthy. So now at this point in my life, like if someone says something like that, 
I just ignore it. But I used to let it like get me charged up. Like I felt like I will accept that challenge. Yeah, it's push and uh, don't put it out. Yeah. It's yeah. It's very, it's very important. So um, <laughs> you're a dreamer. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. and you can say that helps you to to go for for your dreams. Yeah, completely. I mean, I. I just think when your mind works in a way that you have all these different ideas, you should at least try them. I mean, I'm not... I have ideas that are not even just with singing, but I have ideas about things sometimes, and, and I'll try to do something, and maybe it won't work out, but I still kind of want to try. I don't know. I think you should just sort of enjoy that experience of, of being excited and having ideas about things, and I can't think of like a specific example. But I've always like wanted. Uh, I just always thought you can make your life how you want it to be, mm -hmm. and so, sometimes you really have disappointments. But you kind of also can can I think really make your life the what you want it to be if you're brave and you and you keep trying, you know. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And do you? Sorry, I forgot to question. <laughs> How did, where did it take you, um, or in which time you're most creative? I'm probably most creative um, when I'm home and I'm alone, yeah. when I'm just by myself. Um, you know, if, if I'm home and, and no one else is around, and maybe I've had like a couple glasses of wine, and I just sit out on my porch and like I'm just outdoors, then I usually find myself wanting to write words mm -hmm. and like coming up with lots of ideas and thoughts. So in order to really like go with my thoughts, I sort of have to be by myself. Mm -hmm. okay. And how do you feel when you listen to your own music? Um, I feel good, but you know, I only listen to it enough to know that I'm okay with it being out there. You know, like if my album, I've never really listened to it. I've listened to it all the way through once. Like, I don't listen to it. It's funny. I know it's good. It's not that I don't like it, but I just, I don't want to listen to myself. Yeah, you know. It yeah, it's sort of like, um, I don't know. Like, I like my cooking, but I'd rather someone else that's really good at cooking cook for me. <laughs> like, I don't know. I know I love to cook, and I love my own cooking, but I don't know. There's things like, it's, it's weird. I think it's weird to listen to yourself. Like, if somebody were driving around in their car, like, listening to their own music, I would think they were sort of, like, really way too into themselves. <laughs> I don't know, but no, I don't really listen to my own music, but I listen to it, I listen to it a couple times to be like, okay, I did this as well as I can, yeah. you know, I want to make sure that there might be something I sang that I think I can sing better, then I'll do it again, but then there's a point where it's like, okay, I'm happy with it, and then I don't need to listen to it again. Okay, so it's a, it's a part of your life and it's now it's finished. Now. Yeah. Okay. So my last question is, um, what, what's your next steps for the future? Um, more touring. I'm touring here in Europe mm -hmm. for a couple more weeks, three more weeks, and then I'm going to go to Australia and tour, oh, yeah. and then I'll be um, doing a bunch of festivals, mm -hmm. um, like in the UK and, and elsewhere in Europe, and, um, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so just touring, like, through July, mm -hmm. and then I kind of have to discuss it, I think, with my my people I work with, but I kind of want to take, um, excuse me, I want to take like a few months off, but I'm going to write as well and record, but I kind of just want to say like, okay, I'm going to take this amount of months I can get away with and stay home and write and, uh, and I can record at my house. So like just start sort of working on my next album, like casually. And, and it might actually come together really quickly, or it might take more time. So I just sort of want to set myself up for, like, going into the next thing, like, being very relaxed. And, you know, it's crazy because when you travel a lot, it's like you're, you know, sometimes your body can't take it. And you have a lot of adrenaline. And it's not probably super healthy to do as much as I've done. Yeah. And I love it, so I do it, and I don't want to miss out on an opportunity but like with all the flying, even this last week, um, you know, your body hurts yeah, and time feels. and you change time zones and you know, sometimes I, like I'll go 40 hours without sleeping and it's just like, it's cool that I'm young and I can do that, but I'm also really looking forward to like, 
being like, okay, I'm just gonna like sit for like three days, like, you know, and not travel anywhere, you know, not get in a car, not go in an airplane. And I think I'll get bored and I'll probably want to go back out on tour immediately, maybe, but I need to, uh, to cool it. So I'm just gonna tour throughout the rest of the uh, spring into the summer and then take a little break. But my break will be me making a record and then I'll put out a new record next year. Okay. In like March, probably, so. March, guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, do you want to say something to Swiss people? So you um, to yeah, to, to the people of Switzerland. Uh, just thank you for supporting my music. Thank you for um, coming to my concerts, and you know, thank you to uh, some of like the media, and the the, uh, the uh, you know radio that plays my songs, and thank you to my label here, and just everyone here that's like helped me reach more fans. Um, thank you for for believing in it and. Uh, being like the first group of people to to um, embrace myself and my band because we we love coming here so we'll come back. <laughs> Hallo meine lieben Leute, ich komme jetzt gerade vom Lissy Konzert zurück und ich muss sagen, ja, die kleine Blonde hat echt eine geile Stimme. Sie hat die Halle wirklich voll gerockt, hat aber auch sehr emotionale und leise langsame Töne ins Publikum gebracht und ja, die Leute sind abgegangen und wollen sie gar nicht mehr gehen lassen. Hat Spaß gemacht, schön war es dabei. Bis zum nächsten Mal bei agentin.net I'd lose my mind if